Sheffield's first first division derby for 23 years a tumultuous welcome for Dave Bassett's blades and Trevor Francis's owls Bramall Lane packed to the rafters for the day when the city is totally divided whether you're red or blue this is the match of the season for South Yorkshire and who would have believed when the teams met at Hillsborough in January 1968 that we'd have to wait this long for a first division follow-up this program still in pristine condition helps us remember it was a 1-1 draw on that occasion and stirs the memory of some famous names great players have made their names in the derby Colin Addison, Alan Woodward scorching down and a chance for Woodward to make it three it's there oh. that's a good one that's a goal a good header by McKellion Woodward with the in-swing there's one of them, Madison, Madison the scorer, Richie, a goal, a good goal by Richie. It's a great occasion for the city and joining me is a man who's had a foot in both camps, Brian Marwood. Brian, just how are the players feeling down there at the moment? I think very nervous, I think it's uh, really looking at the atmosphere and the uh, potential of the game, it's very much like a cup final today and uh, you know, sort of the players, speaking of the players beforehand, they're very nervous of today's game. How much do you think a match like this one means to the city of Sheffield? Well, they've waited a long time and uh, as I said earlier, you know, you saw the scenes when the both teams came out. Um, it's a tremendous feeling for everybody in the city to experience a Sheffield derby. Yeah. You played in a London derby. Do you think this is going to be an even more passionate occasion? I think so, yes. I think it's, uh, it's important for the people in Sheffield and because they've waited so long, um, it's even more important for them to go to work on Monday hoping that their side has won. Thanks very much, Brian. Well, for years, the people of Sheffield have looked forward to this day. They've seen the Liverpool and Manchester derbies. This is their day, though, and it's one that's been missing from the calendar for too long. Dave Bassett names this lineup and spurns the opportunity to introduce on loan signing from Aston Villa, Kevin Gage, straight away. Gage is on the bench with John Reid, a youngster who is pitched in at the deep end after a loan spell with Scarborough. That's a surprising choice. The good news is, if it is a gamble, Brian Dean is back after his bout of glandular fever. He's had only a couple of reserve outings, but he's so vital to United's cause that Bassett had no hesitation in naming him. Sheffield Wednesday have had a comparatively smooth build-up to the derby. Trevor Francis took these men away to Portugal for a break last week, would you believe? His main concern was who to play at centre-back. And Viv Anderson, the captain, has got the vote. He is the player who takes over because Nigel Pearson is not considered fit. The referee today is Stephen Lodge from Barnsley. A big day for another South Yorkshire man. And away we go with Sheffield Wednesday in their yellow shirts and light blue shorts with a big following here of about 7,000 fans today at Bramall Lane. They would have liked a lot more than that and a lot of disappointed people in the city. I hope they're going to enjoy the game with us. Nielsen for Wednesday, one for Williams to chase. He stumbled but regained his feet and can't just keep it in play. just couldn't get there but good hustling from Hoyland and a free kick Phil King on Bradshaw and Bradshaw then remonstrates with Sheridan and Carl Bradshaw being gagged for the moment by his own players as much as by the Wednesday ones Jamie Hoyland is just saying uh, keep your mouth close for the moment Carl we've got the free kick that's all we wanted I think perhaps Carl might be a little bit more charged up than everybody else because obviously he's another one who's played for both clubs. Um, but it's all about keeping your concentration and keeping you cool on days like this. And certainly, uh, you know, Carl's, Carl's got a look to do that. It's a tough job, job for Stephen Lodge, the referee. It's nice to see a South Yorkshire official being selected for the match, however. That's right. I think he'll obviously understand uh, the players and the sort of uh, the understanding of what it means to the to the players today in today's game. United free kick with Gannon and Hoyland there. Bradshaw is there too. 
and so is Dane Whitehouse, he's number 11, he might try and curl it in, that's exactly what he does do, got the direction right, but Chris Woods had got his positional play right too. A good effort, actually it was quite a good set play because two players stood over the ball, not allowing Chris Woods to see any of it, and uh, Dane was just a little bit, little bit sort of a cue with his shot, but uh, it was a good effort. Actually, in the first 10 minutes, John, it's noticeable that a lot of the players are struggling to keep their feet. Um, it seems as if there's quite a, a greasy surface on top and uh, a lot of players are slipping and sliding around at the moment. Again, that sometimes can be down to anxiety, just keenness to do well and probably thinking a bit too quickly almost. Yes, quite possibly so. You can see with the fans' reaction what a big factor it is for Sheffield United to have Brian Dean back in the side today. Um, he's a very important member of the team and I think it was a great boost not only for the fans but for the players to have him back in the team. This will be a boost for them if they take the lead. It was a poor goal kick from Woods. are chanting United, United, they're right behind their team, Dean's header got inside the Wednesday penalty area, not yet put out of play, it is now by Worthington, and a United throw in, so they're gaining confidence United here, and Worthington to be spoken to and will be the first player cautioned in the game, again it was a confrontation involving Carl Bradshaw, but rather stupidly Worthington has given away a free kick here, when he had no need to do and the ball had already been cleared so referee Lodge taking stern action with not more than about uh, eight or nine minutes gone at the first booking of the game quite surprised actually with Nigel's experience that he looked to give a free kick away in such a dangerous position and certainly right under the referee's nose Gannon to take it long there's the header and a good save as well it was on the back post that Brian Gale had stolen into a good position, a clear header, and Chris Woods really earning his corn for Wednesday with the save. Yeah, the first good effort of the game, a great free kick by John Gannon, and Brian Gale does so well here at the far post and directs a very good header and a good save by Chris Woods. Worthington calling for it long and it's Gale who's gone over to deny him but I think that Gale might be a very inspirational player for this club he's settled in as captain scored a couple of goals in the match recently away at Manchester City throwing them taken by King and again Palmer slipped there what Brian referred to a moment or two ago the players slipping quite a lot Anderson has sped a good ball through and Palmer goes on, Hurst is with him and Palmer smacks it against the United crossbar. Worthington has picked it up and Wednesday keep the pace going with a deep cross which is uh, flicked on by Cowan and then put out of play but the first really exciting moment of the match provided by Carlton Palmer's shot there. Funnily enough, David Hurst was in the middle waiting. Absolutely superb effort by Colm. This is what he does best. He's run strong running from midfield. An absolutely fantastic shot that hit, obviously hit the crossbar. Nielsen's throwing. Corner kick. Return of the Wednesday defence to cheer. That's something Sheffield United are going to have to watch for because of his runs from midfield it can cause all sorts of problems as it did there but it has done all season certainly for opposition sides Wellington curls him in left footed and he curled that one and it's still in a dangerous position and it might end up in the Wednesday in the United net but it won't count with Anderson turning it through but the whistle had already sounded referee Lodge in a good position there so Anderson denied what would have been his third goal of the season a big day too for Trevor Francis, the first time he's managed Sheffield Wednesday in the derby. His first season since taking over from Ron Atkinson and he's making a good fist of the job. Fooled him there, did Pembert Lloyd. And what's more, he's played a terrific pass out left, which uh, Cowan now sweeps onto.
Over half an hour played, the Sheffield Derby remains goalless. And a corner for United, they haven't had many, but they've got the chance now, and once more Brian Gale and Paul Beasley will go in to try and hustle the ball into the Wednesday net. United fans won't care how it ends up, so long as it gets in there. Woods is being... Well, he's on the line and uh, Bryson standing up virtually on his toe end and here's Dean and did that cross the line no it didn't so close Chris Wood stays down groggily United have a corner and that's the closest that United have come Palmer struck the crossbar at one end Dean's towering presence for United here Wood's not getting a clean punch on it there's Dean's little angled header and off the line by Phil King I think Chris Woods would be relieved to see the ball far away from his goal as possible at the moment. I'm sure he's feeling a little bit groggy after that bang on the head. Yes, it'll give him time to regather his senses. Warhurst does beat away Dean's challenge this time. It's an unusual ball. It's found Bradshaw though. And that's a rather unusual cross as well, a big looping effort and Woods has made the save from Dean. It's a good time for Sheffield United, you know, the sort of last five minutes they've created one or two good goal scoring chances and uh, they'll be looking to build on this up to half time now. Hurst beaten away by Gay. Whitehurst. Whitehouse, I should say, has just established himself in the United team here. Did quite well there to keep that ball in play. We had a Whitehurst and a Whitehouse here last year. Probably uh, Whitehurst playing his trade somewhere else now. Bryson couldn't control it, and so Wednesday regained possession. searching ball to find uh, Palmer appeals for handball were not uh, agreed with by the referee so here is Paul Williams now will try a shot and slices it wide and again he slips I think he ought to examine his footwear at half time yeah I'm not sure whether he's playing with roller skates on at the moment John he seems to be sort of uh, on his behind more than he's on his feet at the moment which is uh, you know for him he'd be disappointed because it was a good opportunity for him to cut inside and have a shot on goal certainly pertinent that although Wednesday have been in fourth spot in the first division for some time their away, away form has not really been good this season it's going to go dead they've lost the uh, matches at Notts County, Norwich and Wimbledon and yet they've done well on grounds like Leeds, Liverpool and Manchester City I think if uh, Trevor will be honest you know, if they're looking for a sort of a potentially title winning side then they know they'll have to go to places like that and get results um, at the moment he's building upon what Ron Atkinson did at the club and very successfully for a couple of years and he's not changed a great many things and uh, you know they've obviously doing very well this season but I'm sure that Trevor will be a little bit concerned about perhaps the points that they have dropped but it's still all square here Sheridan to take the free kick Wednesday have got a row of five players along the edge of the penalty box. Sheridan has found Hurst with the good little flick header. Williams trying to get in there. And it was Jamie Hoyland who steered it back into Simon Tracy's safety. Gannon, Dean's on side and Bradshaw is wide of him. Well played by Palmer. Wilson sprinting into space, takes it on gives it wide for Williams and Whitehouse coming back does a good job for United nonetheless a Wednesday throw in he's given a free kick actually John. he has given a free kick yes I, I thought he had and then there didn't seem to be much reaction from anybody Whitehouse perhaps a little unlucky there he was challenging yes, from did very well to get back in, uh, in behind the ball and he was very very unfortunate there and it can be on incidents like this that matches turn United will certainly think so if Wednesday score from this Wilson or Worthington it's going to be Worthington and it's not a bad one first coming at the back post and Tracy didn't touch it so it's a goal kick 
But a moment of panic in the United defence. Yes, quite a dangerous moment there. Good free kick by Nigel Worthington. I think Simon Tracy misjudged it slightly. And it was just too long for David Hurst coming in on the far post. A good free kick by Worthington. Tracy's come and then he's missed it. And David Hurst just slightly too long for him. It's Wednesday ending the half on the attack. With another throw. Got a couple of stoppages, so there was some time to add on. Williams tried to dance his way around Cowan and couldn't do so, but the Scottish fullback now stays down momentarily. The referee should blow his whistle because this would have been unfair to United had play been allowed to continue then. Yeah, I think that uh, you could obviously see that he was in a, lo a, a lot of trouble there with an injury, and I think that it was right that he should blow the whistle. I just can't understand why he let the, the throw in be taken. He might have thought that Callum was about to get up, but uh, he wasn't, and he's grimacing. So, Derek French has been called into action again with his physiotherapy work. Well, it's not long until he can go in the dressing room and receive treatment that he requires. Throw in for Wednesday. Shouts of foul throw against Nielsen. And the corner for Wednesday. The closing seconds of the half and it would certainly change the entire complexion of the game if they scored I think at the moment both sides are reasonably happy at nil-nil they might be happy at the end of the day if that's the way it stays I suppose but Wednesday have the encouragement of a corner a set piece Worthington fails for handball it, uh, drifted through and in fact the free kick is given for the handball Anxious moments now for your Sheffield United defence. Very anxious. King's gone to the back post. And with people like Anderson and Palmer in there and Hurst. There's a lot of hustling again going on. Cowan knocks it out. And Gannon completing the clearance. Oh, oh, and then a total mix-up between Warhurst and Sheridan has got United streaking through. Bryson can give United the lead. Saved by Woods, it's a following for Whitehouse! Sheffield United take the lead! What a memorable moment for the young man Dane Whitehouse! A terrific roar around the ground and it all came after the Warhurst and Sheridan collision. Bryson was in the free. He had the shot, Woods effected a brilliant stop but nobody was going to stop Dane Whitehouse. And United lead with a goal from a local player born in Sheffield. It means more to him than anyone. A very, very important time for United to score and a very disappointing time for Wednesday to concede one. In a nutshell, Brian, and uh, appeals for handball against Beasley. Interestingly enough, it might, might have been half-time, but for the injury to, to Cowan. Who knows? Time had to be added on. And now the referee will blast on the whistle. And a good half then for United. They lead by a goal to nil. Dane Whitehouse plundered that goal in the last minute of the first half. So half-time here at Bramall Lane is Sheffield United 1, Sheffield Wednesday nil. And we'll be back with the second half after the break. In the morning... In the evening, in the bar, in the middle of a dinner party, very nice. Melvin, if your mother rings once more to remind us, I'm leaving home. Remember, the last date to register for a prospectus for the BT share offer and be able to qualify for incentives is November the 18th. Now, when I really need you, nothing. Phone 0272 272 272. Petrol is important. Tall, yet easy to drive. A big, roomy, boxy bag. Bananas. I must have hanging space for my bananas. I'm in there as on well. I'm not heavy, but I need to move a lot quicker. It should be long and about this wide, you see? Quite large. Vast landscape sometimes. Well, it's got to be able to carry the lot, you know. Introducing the brand new Port Courier. <laughs> I assumed Modern would prefer the medium-dry country manner. Oh, did you now? 
Well, it's in a green bottle, isn't it? To go with your green clothes and your green children. Don't push it. I assume the other one is for the Satsuma in the corner, is it? Country Manor, in a class of its own. Any machine can play games with you, but... I'm the Atari ST. A real thing, not a plaything. Hello there. This Harris Hawk is an avid meat eater. Doesn't think much of the meat flavoured snacks. Yes, as I thought, he's settled for pepper army made from 100% tangy meat. You could say he's given other snacks the bird. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, Angela. You look very nice. One has been asked to do a Nescafe commercial. Have you? Why? Because one has taste, that's why. Some people have good taste, and some people don't. But I drink Nescafe. Yes, but you don't appreciate the rich aroma. No, but I love the smell. Are these the special beans? Please don't touch those. Oh, go on. One shake is all one wants. Really? Nescafe. Coffee at its best. Biscuit. Biscuit. Kai? What? Kai? Welcome back to your match at Bramall Lane. A surprising scoreline to many people, perhaps. It's Sheffield United 1, Sheffield Wednesday 0. And that goal by Dane Whitehouse has really set up the second half. And I tell you what, he's also justified the fact he's just signed a new contract till 1994. King again. Hoyland. Which landed at Dean's foot. It just looped over the top of King. Here is Brian Dean. Trying to profit from the ricochet. Throw in. I think Wednesday will be disappointed today, John, that they've not been able to get their, their crisp passing together. Um, they haven't really put many sort of movements together at, uh, at all today. And certainly a contrast of styles as Pemberton hurls another throw in into the uh, Wednesday box. And now he can play a cross in. West Worthington denies him the space. He does put a cross in and Warhurst nudges it straight to the foot of Hoyland. Here's the ball in for United, cleared by Hurst. And he's found his partner up front, Paul Williams, all on his own. So far as the Wednesday side was concerned, it's Wednesday's throw. I imagine some Wednesday fans are rather disappointed their side isn't playing in blue and white stripes. They're the traditional colours. I'm sure in the old days both sides used to play in stripes on Derby Day. <laughs> That's right. I'm just wondering how much Trevor Francis might regret not having himself a substitute today. Huge punt from Woods. Gale under it well. Hurst hasn't had a break as such. Palmer cleverly guiding the ball inside to Danny Wilson. And uh, was Wilson tripped? He was by Beasley as he went on to Hurst's return ball. So Wednesday have a free kick in a good position now. It's especially dangerous when you've got people of the calibre of Sheridan, Worthington and King around on the ball who, uh, who can do all sorts of things in this particular position. Wednesday trail by a goal to nil, so they look for the equaliser from this set piece. Might suit Hurst's left foot. Sheridan might try and curl it over the top, I suppose. Wilson starts it off. Hurst hits it straight into the wall, gets another chance and puts it just over the top for a goal kick. Hurst was complaining that uh, the United wall was probably too close, but he got a second dab at it. I don't know whether he felt that it was actually a deflection for a corner, I'm not sure, but he was remonstrating with the referee about something. A good effort here, but a good block by the Sheffield United wall. They did the job perfectly there. He came back to David Hurst, who had another shot, which just went over. 
David Hurst, who is widely tipped as being the natural successor to Gary Lineker, who has intimated, I understand, that he wants to retire from international football after next summer's European Championships. But he's had few opportunities on this day. Yes, that's right. But uh, it's an important year for David Hurst, as, as it is for perhaps people like Carlton Palmer as well, because uh, with the European Championships coming up, they could prove um, quite an important people. Gale's free kick for United, and Dean is in there with a clear header. He couldn't get any strength on it, really, but uh, rather alarming from a Wednesday point of view that Dean was allowed the space. I think perhaps Johnny didn't realise the amount of time he had there. Well, it's been one back for Wednesday, and Hurst supplies the ball to Worthington. He's probably going to hold it up first. Now he gives it wide. Palmer's cross in. Hurst is looking for it. It drops for Williams, who's done well. Paul Williams can equalise for Wednesday. Cuts it back, and Wilson's little side foot is nudged aside by Tracy. And that really is the best opportunity that Danny Wilson is probably going to get today. Fine opportunity there for Sheffield Wednesday. Good play between Worthington and Palmer. He knocked a good ball in, and David Hurst did very well. Dropped to uh, Paul Williams there and he's very unselfish here, knocks it right back across the goal and Danny Wilson misses it, very disappointing for Wednesday Wilson who's here again in the old shot hasn't scored since the third game of the season yes he got two in the first three matches and hasn't registered since he should have done then I think in games like this John as well those sort of chances don't really come around that often very true, Danny Wilson disappointed a different type of corner from Worthington and a dangerous one and Tracy didn't get a clean punch on it and it's Wednesday's turn to sort of try and come to the boil Worthington's header in Dean's got back to help out Worthington another header in cleared as far as Warhurst tricky moments these for United Worthington is down in the penalty area and uh, Tracy sportingly will throw the ball out and that's good to see so that treatment can be applied to Nigel Worthington. Doughty competitor though, Nigel Worthington. He's all right, but he's coming off. And that's a sensible move by Trevor Francis. He needs everybody to be 100% off their metal at the moment. And having got a knock on the head, Worthington gives way for Nigel Jensen. Can, he do, can he do to this United what he did to Manchester's? Well, Sheffield Wednesday, we're hoping he can. I think that uh, we were talking earlier about the different attacking options that Trevor Francis has got, and he's certainly played one of those now in Nigel Jensen. Lovely ball over the top, and Williams takes it on into the United penalty area, cuts it back. Another chance is gone because Jensen can't steer it wide of Tracy. He couldn't get the angle on it. It was a difficult ball in for him to take. <laughs> Yes, another good run by Williams, he played a great ball in there and Jemson just got there first, but good defending by John Pemberton. There's a nice knock-on. And yet again, Bradshaw it is who stayed down this time, so Fisio might be required yet again in the match as the ball is played back. He's actually picked himself up holding his back. Williams has found Hurst, oh that was good and Hurst takes it through Gale's legs, cuts inside, hits the shot right footed, straight at Tracy, but he's had a shot and that's the first time in the match. That's right, he's not had many opportunities to do that this afternoon, David Hurst did very well here, cut inside again Brian Gale and finished with a shot, perhaps not as strong as he would like and not on his favoured left foot. It's interesting to see another option that Sheffield Wednesday are employing now and looks like John Harks is coming on a substitute. He'll replace Danny Wilson. The number seven is held aloft. And the American, John Harks, who has scored some spectacular goals in his brief career with Sheffield Wednesday, is the man that they look to again now. Here's Hoyland with an important ball into Whitehouse and flipped over the top by Chris Woods. Otherwise, Whitehouse would have got his second on the day. Good save by Woods because keepers have to maintain concentration. All right, Whitehouse uh, hasn't got the most powerful header in the game. Here's a chance for Dean. Brian Dean, it's gone through. The gamble has paid off for Dave Bassett. 
and Brian Dean brings ecstasy to the terraces at Bramall Lane ecstasy at one end desperation at the other Dean shot nutmeg Chris Woods on the line yeah he did ever so well here he made enough space for himself to get in the shot but Chris Woods would be disappointed he went through his legs there and good effort there straight through Chris's legs he'd be very disappointed he didn't get hold of that so well, pleased for Brian Dean because he's been off seven weeks now it was a bit of a gamble playing him today but he's come through that and he's done superbly well even to get this far in the game well you regard him as a saint here some of the fans uh, he's certainly very high in their estimation at the moment but Wednesday come back they're two goals down they've got to do something dramatic Parks has come on as substitute well they certainly haven't had a lot to sing about this season they were singing all right in the second half of last season but the misery will certainly be relieved here if United win and move off the bottom of the first division table Hurst underneath it, Palmer's gone on, chances here, Pemberton and Tracy was very, very positive in coming from his line in the nick of time. The game has been played in fits and starts really. I suppose that often happens in derby matches. Uh, tension often rules. Hoyland for United. He's trying to emulate his dad who was on the winning side twice. Here's his ball in, it's a good one, Dean is climbing for it with Woods, who loses it under pressure, and there was no whistle as well. If Whitehouse had reacted, there might have been something on. Here is Cowan, steaming up, and the ball across is put out of play by Warhurst, and Wednesday are in trouble at the moment, they're rocking back there. And Chris has certainly been in the wars today, as you can see on that cut on his eye. He would certainly have expected a free kick maybe here. Yes, it's unusual for referees not to give a free kick. Ian Bryson showed very well from Jamie Hall in there. He's not the ball back. Jamie's played a good ball in there, and Brian Dean's challenged with Chris with his elbow, and he's caught him on the eye. Well, people talking about referees giving goalkeepers too much protection. Maybe that was one occasion where Woods would have an argument that he didn't get enough. I think Chris will certainly know he's been in the game today, John. Certainly the knock he took first half. Uh, from his own player actually on the line and uh, and the goals that he's conceded so uh, he'll certainly remember this game for a long time and denoted a trace of blood on the uh, cheek there of uh, Warhurst too United's corner, back post w Dean coming for it, headed away, not very far smacked in, what a good effort from Whitehouse and that one almost decapitated Phil King on the line well that is absolutely unbelievable how they cleared that off the line just a defensive header that's come out and it's fallen and Dane Whitehouse has struck it superbly well I think it was Phil King that actually looks like he's handled the ball on the line there Warhurst has been covered in blood good flick through and the uh, pass back by Gale was good too good defending there by the skipper There's some bruised bodies and faces out there but most of the scares have come for Wednesday Oh, what a pass back by Harts. And Bryson played it first time for Dean, and it was King who got back. King's done really well for Wednesday today, but that was uncharacteristic of John Harts. I think Phil King's perhaps been Sheffield Wednesday's best player today. Uh, he's defended very well, joined the attack when he can, but uh, they'll be disappointed with John Harts' back pass then. I'd go along with that, and that was rather silly down on the touchline. The substitute John Reid kicked the ball away from David Hurst. He could actually have been booked for that, even though he's not on the field. Here's Hurst inside the area, just the first touch took it away from him, he's followed through on Tracy, certainly a whistle will go against Hurst, and it's now boiling over rather unnecessarily. The referee Lodge has got to get in the midst of that little lot and sort it out. This is a side of football that we don't like seeing, John, isn't it really? Um, David is perhaps in the frustration has followed through there into the goalkeeper and uh, he's going to it's going to be anxious moments for David Hurst yes he's lost the ball really and Simon Tracy's got the ball and he's just followed through there with his foot don't really think he's made a very bad connection with uh, Tracy on this occasion and it is as you say uh, Brian a question of frustration and uh, David Hurst 
has to be careful don't forget he was booked in the first half and that would be a rather ignominious way to end a derby match for him yeah I think like you said you know the frustration of David there he hasn't had many opportunities today and one came his way there but he just overrun it and I think he's just out of frustration that he's uh, he's gone in as hard as he did certainly running out for Wednesday less than five minutes on the watch as Jemson tries to twist inside a challenge and find Sheridan he does that well and that's a good ball through Paul Williams can score here great save from Tracy when it mattered most Paul Williams has been as sharp as anybody for Wednesday today and that was a good strike on goal now here's Hurst the ball in his deep but it went out of play but Simon Tracy really has made me feel that this is going to be United's day with that crucial stop. That's right, one of the few times that John Sheridan's had the opportunity to thread and to weave his way through. There's a great ball here by John Sheridan, one of the few times he's been able to do it today. A good run by Paul Williams, a good strike and equally a good save by Simon Tracy. who's just checking that his watch was still ticking wasn't the best clearance by Warhurst Dean dances among the balloons and he'll be dancing in ecstasy in a moment or two if they win it here's Bryson could have made it three good opportunity Brian did it superbly well there and hit a great left foot cross and Ian Bryson found himself on the far post and just a little bit put off I think by Roland Nielsen's challenge Dean taking it on the chest Bryson's going up the left side Dean goes on can he round it off memorably here Bryson the ball in Oof, it was going towards Hoyland until Warhurst cleared it's Sheffield United's derby day the city belongs to the red and whites and it means so much to them Wednesday deflated Dane Whitehouse with the first goal a Sheffield boy in the last minute of the first half and then Brian Dean the gamble paid off he's played his first game for six weeks and made the final score here a memorable one if you're a Blades fan it's Sheffield United 2 Sheffield Wednesday 0 Dave congratulations a very emotional day for you and the supporters well, I think the fact that it's been a local derby for the first time for a long time, everybody built it up, and obviously if there was going to be a win, some set of supporters were going to be disappointed. Obviously, I'm delighted to have got the three points and, and won on, on today. I mean, it was important for us to get a win because we need points infinitely more than Sheffield Wednesday from a relegation point of view. Obviously, they need them for challenging for the championship. Trevor, is it difficult to lift the players up after that uh, now? Well, at the moment, it's a little bit difficult, but uh, they have to be lifted because we've got another big game on Wednesday against Southampton. And then we're at home on Saturday against Arsenal. The first goal came at a critical time, didn't it? Just before the interval. That's right, it was a bad mistake. Well, I'm not sure exactly who was to blame, whether it was John Sheridan or Paul Warrest. But, uh, you know, just coming on half-time, it's not what we needed. And the second one too, because you just had a good spell of pressure. Uh, why not pop Brian Dean with the second one? Chris Wood's disappointed, I'm sure. I think it went through his legs, didn't it? I've not seen it on the replay, but... Uh, yeah, a couple of mistakes, and uh, but we're making too many mistakes this season. have cost us. <laughs> But I think that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, overall, we've got no complaints. I think that Sheffield United deserve to win. Dave, could this be a turning point in your season? Well, I'd hope so. I mean, we thought beating Nottingham Forest two weeks ago would be a turning point. We went to the two <coughs> Manchester clubs, should have got something out of both those games and didn't. It's another three points, but obviously we've got to go to Tottenham next week and then we've got Luton at home and we've got to be looking to pick up as many points as possible. We don't want to fall adrift of the teams down the bottom. Dave, Trevor, thanks very much indeed. A thrilling derby match here then at Bramwell Lane. And there's more big football coming your way on YTV next Saturday night. But let's just have a look now at what's happened to the Division 1 table as a result of the, this result. Sheffield Wednesday still in seventh position. Leeds United top, of course, a point clear of Manchester United, four clear of Manchester City. And down at the bottom, well, Sheffield United are off the bottom. That's cheerful news for them. They're now two points clear 
of Luton Town and one point behind Southampton so certainly been a good day for Sheffield United here at Bramall Lane as you can see from the table well, as I say more football next Saturday night highlights of a top match in the region on YTV that's at 11 o'clock on Saturday and don't forget coming up in a few minutes ITV's live match from Upton Park West Ham against Liverpool a real feast of football on Yorkshire this afternoon but here at Bramall Lane the only result they cared about was the most important one of the season for United fans. Goodbye for now.